All right, so for adding and subtracting rational numbers, B4. First off, Chucky, can you tell me what a rational number is? Um, I don't know. If you look at the screen, it'll help you out. Uh, I don't know. Yes, you do. Look at the screen. What numbers do you I see? I am looking at the screen. Yeah, but what numbers do you see on the screen? One half and nine tenths. Yeah, what type of numbers are that? Rational. Nah. But, like, how would you describe one half? It's a what? It starts with an F. Fraction. Yeah, it's a fraction. So this is all going to be about adding and subtracting fractions. Now, what do you guys know about fractions? Julie, what do you know about fractions? What do you mean? When you add or subtract fractions, what has to be the same? The denominator. The denominator. So the denominator, all right, let me write these bigger. The denominator in these cases are two and 10, right? Now, they are not the same. So how do I make them the same? How can I make How can I make these two things the same? Multiply two by five and 10 by one. Ooh, look at you, Mr. Gallo. So we're gonna multiply the one half by five over five. Now, Mr. Gallo said multiply the 10 by one, but he is finding the common denominator. So in order to add fractions or subtract fractions, I need to add or kind of come up with the common denominator. So here, nine tenths stays the way it is, but one half becomes five because one times five is five and two times five is 10. Now, can we add nine tenths and five tenths? Yes. All right, what would that be? 14 tenths. Very good. Now, is there anything I could do with 14 tenths? Apply it to one and four, uh, one and four tenths. Ooh, that's very good. Is there anything I could do with four tenths? Apply even more, I think, no. I don't think you can. Well, you now, can so we, you went pretty far on that. But we can simplify 14 over 10. Now, what number goes into 14 and what number goes into 10? Does anybody know? Two. Two. So I can divide each of these by two and I can get seven fifths. Now, this is called simplifying fractions. So when I come up here, Louis, let's find out. So you said first the answer was 14 tenths, right? So let's see what happens when I enter in that. Now it liked it, okay? It didn't, it didn't yell at me for not simplifying. But let me show you something. Now, do you guys have your calculators handy? Because if you don't, why mine's loading is Good time for you to get your calculator. So what we can do is we can actually use our graphing calculator to kind of help us out here. So that problem was nine tenths minus one half. And we can, we get this, um, or it was nine halves or nine tenths plus one half, right? So, oh, 
I can't win today. Nine tenths plus one half. All right, so we got the 1.4. Now, we talked about, Louis said, oh, it's 14 tenths, and we typed that in and it counted. But notice if I use my calculator and I hit math, enter, enter, it gives me a answer of seven fifths, which was my other answer. All right, so I can use my graphing calculator to help me out here. Now, let's go to Mike. Mike, you're there? I'm here. Yeah, Mike, sounds like Mike's there. What is two fifths minus three fifths? So it's two minus three. Negative one. So my answer would be when I do two fifths minus three fifths, my answer is two minus three, which is negative one fifth. Over five. So I would negative one fifth. John, how would I do no. two fifths plus four fifths? Um, wouldn't you just do, since it's the same denominator, wouldn't it just be uh, six over five? Six fifths, very good. We add the numerators. Woo. All right, here we go. Now I have these mixed numbers. I have negative two and seven tenths, and I have negative seven and three tenths. Now, Ellie, do you like mixed numbers? Um, sometimes. Yeah, but this isn't the case where we like mixed numbers. This is the case where we don't like mixed numbers. The reason why I don't like mixed numbers, Ellie, is because they're really hard to add or subtract. So what I actually prefer is a improper fraction. Now, do you know how to take these numbers and make them uh, improper fractions? Um, isn't the improper like, I forget how to do it. What if I started you out? 10 times two. Oh, 10, that's 20. Yeah, and what do we do with the seven? Um, oh yeah, we add it. So it'd be 27 over 10. Very good. So that we're gonna write is- And then- yeah, You got, no, you got the, the green one. Tell me the green one. It's negative 73 over 10. Perfect. Now, wouldn't you agree that negative 27 over 10 minus negative 73 over 10. Wouldn't you agree that looks easier to do than the mixed numbers? Yeah. Yeah, because mixed numbers, we might have to borrow and things like that. So two negatives make a what, Allie? They make a positive. So what is negative 27 plus 73? Um, oh wait, isn't it, a, isn't it a negative still? Cause you still have the negative from the 27. I don't know. Well, no, you do know, you're, you're really close. So which one's bigger, the negative 27 or the positive 73 now? Cause the two- Oh, it's the positive. So my answer is going to be positive. So do you have a calculator right there? Uh, yeah. Can you do negative 27 plus 73?
Um, is it 46? It is. So we can write this as 46 over 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's do a couple more of these. And then I'm going to let you guys work on your own. Okay. And I'll break you guys up. So. Joe, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Joe, what do I have to do before I start this problem? Uh, get the same, uh, what's, what's that word start with? Numerator, I think it is. Close, denominator. Yeah. So what's the least common denominator? Uh, 10. 10. So let me write the problem. Now, how do I make a 5 to 10, Joe? Uh, times it by 2. How do I make it 2 to 10? Times it by 5. See where I got them from? Yeah. Now, two times negative two is negative four. And you already told me two times five is 10. Mm -hmm. Plus negative one times five is negative five. And two times five is 10. So now I just need to know what is negative four tenths plus negative five tenths? Well, let's think about it this way. Let me put it in context for you. I think that'll help you out. If you borrow $4 from me and then you borrow $5 from me, how much did you borrow from me? $9. $9. And borrowing is never good. So it would be negative nine tenths. Are you okay with that, Joe? Yeah. All right. Ah. Oh. Now we're into decimals. Decimals are also fractions, but they're easier to deal with. So it's 3.8 minus 3.4. Kim, can you type that in the chat real quick? Close, is it positive or negative, Kim? So which one's bigger? Is the 3.8 bigger or the 3.4? Cause you're really, really close there. All right, let me help you out, Kim. So 3.8 minus 3.4 is positive 0.4. So yeah, I think maybe you just like mistakenly put it. So when we do 3.8 minus 3.4, think about it. You have $3.80 and you spend $3.40. So your answer, okay. would be 40 cents. And I think you mistakenly hit the negative sign when you hit the zero. So it's just 0. 0.4. All right, who can remind me, what do I have to do with mixed numbers? Let's go with Olivia. Olivia, what do I have to do with mixed numbers? Um, 
on them? Uh, yes, you do. I have to make them what? Blank fractions. It starts with an I, ends in mm proper. Improper fraction? Yeah, it has to be an improper fraction. So Olivia, do you remember how to make two and three tenths an improper fraction? You can say no. Don't you like, don't you like add two and 10 and then multiply by three or something? You're really close. You got to add and multiply backwards. So we're gonna do two times 10 plus three. So Olivia, what's two times 10 plus three? 23. And now what's eight times two plus one? Seventeen. Perfect. And now we have to make a common denominator. Now, Nate, I'm not sure if your microphone's working or if your camera's working or whatnot, but what's the common denominator? You can always put it in the chat box and Mrs. Simonian will shout it out for me. So I think the common denominator might be 10. It is 10. So we already have one as 10. So how do make 17 halves a 10? What do I have to do to this back one? You got to multiply by five. Perfect. Now, Nate, I know you're pretty good at math, but do you happen to know what 17 times five is? Off the top of the dome? It's the 85. Ooh, did you do that in your head? I did. Ooh, classy. Now, 23 plus 85, do you know what that is? 23 plus 85, is it, uh, hmm, like one, 115 or 105, it's one of them. In between, it's gonna be 108, because five plus three is eight, and eight plus two is 10, so 108. Where come from? Are you kidding me? All right. So we have 108 over 10. Now let's practice reducing it. Mr. Gallo, we're back to you. Mr. Gallo, what goes into 10 and 108? Uh, two. Two. So um, 10 divided by two is five. Mr. Gallo, what is 108 divided by two? 50, what? 54. Perfect. 54. Did your brother give you that answer? I'm not even at my dad's house. Oh. Well, there we go. All right, who wants to do this problem? How about John? Um, well, wouldn't that just be uh, 16 over 10? Can you give me a better answer? You're right. But give me the best well, answer. Well, I don't know. You just add since the common or since the denominator is the same, I guess it would be a common denominator and you just add nine plus seven. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not debating that. The answer is definitely 16 over 10. If I type that in, I get it right. I know that. But I'm wondering, is there a simplified fraction that I could put in there? Um, yeah, I'm just five over eight or eight over five. Eight over five because you divided both the top and the bottom by two. Got it. All right, Julie. Julie? Yes, sir. That's right. That is exactly what you call a cop. Yes, sir. So, Julie, which number is bigger, 1.9 or 8.5? Uh, 
1.9? Because isn't 8.5 negative? Don't worry about the negative. Okay, so then it's 8.5. Okay, so I know that if I do a smaller number minus a bigger number, my answer is negative. So I know my answer is negative, okay? So follow me here. I need to do without a calculator, 1.9 minus 8.5. So I'm gonna reverse it. See what I did there, Julie? See how I flipped it? So whatever my answer gets, I get here, my answer is gonna be the opposite of it, okay? So five becomes 15 and eight becomes seven. Do you see what I did there, Julie? Yeah. It's called borrowing, right? So 15 minus nine is what, Julie? Hold up, what? Oh, never mind, never mind, I get it now, uh, six. And what's seven minus one? Six. So my answer, because remember it's the opposite, because it was negative, I'm doing the opposite of the problem, is 6.6 .6 and it's negative. Katie, you there? Yeah. Katie, what's two plus one half? Two and a half. Two and a half. So let's try and type that in. So now to type in a mixed number, we could do two space one half. Let's see if it likes it. Look at that. That was easy. All right, let's pick on. Hmm. Hmm. Annie. Annie, can you hear me? Sadly. Sadly. Oh my gosh. Still with the sass. Love it. Annie. How do I make these mixed mixed numbers um, improper fractions? What do I do? I don't know. Oh yes, you do. Think about it. What if I told you how to do like something with the eight and 10? Is it um, 89 over 10? And it is 89 over 10. And 19 over two. And then you said it was 19 over two? Perfect. Now, the problem with this Cody is they don't have common denominators. So Cody, what's the common denominator between two and 10? 10. 10, how do I make that two a 10? Multiply it by five. All right, so what is 19 times five? Cody, do you know? Oh, you're still talking to me? No. Oh, um, 95. 95. Chucky, what's 89 tenths minus 95 tenths? Um, let me see. Negative six. Perfect. Negative six. That's now, Chucky. I want the best answer. So negative six. That's if I type that in, I know I get it right. Hundred percent of the time, I get that right. But I want it as a reduced fraction. What is negative six tenths? Is a reduced fraction. 
Negative three fifths. Perfect. All right. Mrs. Simonian. Mr. Harmon. How would I do this problem? I think I'm going to just subtract one half from, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to add one half to negative three. Okay. And I'm going to get negative 2.5. Okay, so how did you do that so quick? I just so, took five away from negative three. Well, there you go. So Mrs. Simone kind of realized, hey, if I do three minus one half or 0.5, I get 2.5. But that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. I wanted to do negative three plus one half. So she took the opposite of her answer. All right, now if you're still a little lost in the sauce there, we can always do negative three and we can view it as, oh, let me multiply that by two over two. And we can view that as negative six over two plus one half. Negative six plus one, negative five over two, which is the same as what Mrs. Simonian did. Well, let's see if it likes negative 2.5. And there you go, it did. All right, one or two more problems. So, Mr. Gallo. Hello. Mr. Gallo, how do I make Hello. how do I make mixed numbers into improper uh, fractions? To be honest with you, I don't really know. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I'll give you a hint. You do something with the nine and the ten. What? You do something with the nine and the ten. What do I do? Oh, you multiply them. So that's 90. And then what do we do with the one? Add it or divide it? Add it. Add Nicely done. 91 over 10. And it's negative. Now, Mr. Gallo, what is yes. one two fifths? Uh, it's just seven. Negative seven over five. Nice. Seven fifths. Now, how do I... How do I make those denominators the same? Uh, divide five by two, or multiply five by two. Nice, way to catch yourself. And then multiply 10 by one. Okay, so that times one is 91 over 10, plus negative 14 over 10. What is negative 91 plus negative 14? What, what is that? Negative 105. Now, Mr. Gallo, you are good at this. So give me a better answer than negative 105. Uh, give me a second. Uh, negative 10 and one half. Which is, as a fraction, negative 21 over two. Now, when I have a decimal and a fraction, I have to make them both the same kind of like, think of like the same base, but I have to make them the same format here. Now it's easier to make a decimal or a fraction, a decimal, than a decimal fraction. So I do on my calculator, okay? So I'm gonna pull up my calculator. I'm gonna do negative one-fifth, and I'm gonna hit enter. Notice I get negative 0.2. So I'm gonna do negative 0.2 minus a negative 
4.75. But two negatives make a positive. And now I kind of think of this as I have $4.75 and I buy a 20 cent piece of gum from Wawa. So I have $4.55 left. Any questions, comments, concerns? concerns.